All right, okay, so <laughs> hello, dear Stan. So welcome now to the continuation of our lecture on Harada Mori, no, and culture techniques in Para. And for this video, we're going now to start with the larvae of your Strongyloides stercoralis. Okay, so again, ang um, previous videos or previous slides, we now started with hookworm, no, and ha their characteristics of their larvae and even the adults, all right? But for Strongy, we're going now to... Um, Start with the larvae. Okay, I was really thinking na matapos ko. I was really thinking that I'm going to finish this in two videos lang. But yes, I thought wrong. <laughs> Dami ko kasing chika. Alright, but anyway, sige na lang. Alright. Okay, but I hope lang I was able to discuss properly. Sana naman. Okay, alright. So again, for Strongyloides turcoralis larvae. Okay, so we'll start first with, of course, your rhabditiform larva. So as you can see, for rhabditiform talaga, both in hookworm and strongy, their size is quite, di ba, stout, no, and they're short then, okay? Uh, but for strongy, its buccal cavity or its mouth is short, di ba? Recall for hookworm, long ang kanyang buccal cavity, okay? And aside from that, its genital primordium is prominent, meaning you can really see the genital primordium. Um, medyo di claro dito, but there's a bulge here sa side usually that you can see the genital primordium, I think. I think I, I'll edit na lang this to find a parang picture with the genital primordium. So, yes, okay. So, it's prominent. You can really see it. Parang it's a bulge, parang a circle here na parang yan. So, parang ganun. Okay, so again, I'll change the picture uh, before I upload this. <laughs> okay, alright. So, again, just take note of the characteristics. Short mouth, but yeah, big ang kanyang genital organ. Ducks. Later, mga mnemonics. Okay, alright. Ayan. That's for its rhabditiform larva. Ayan, so short buccal cavity. Now, for um, the second one is, of course, the filariform. For filariform larva, as you can see, longer esophagus than hookworm. Okay, all right. And aside from that, the tail is notched. Nako, si Strongy talaga yung mga mahilig sa mga ganyan. Okay, so Strongy, yeah, I'm a Strongy. Charot, <laughs> okay. Strongy ka ba? Okay, all right, ayan. All right, but anyway, okay, so again, uh, longer esophagus, and as you can see, the tail is notched. Okay, not clear medyo here, but we have a closer picture of the notched tail. Ayan, so as you can see. The tail is, di ba, ang filariform larva for hookworm, ang kanyang tail is pointed. Parang ganun. Wow, too much pointed naman, Mark. Okay, the first strongy, it's notched, meaning... Ang kanyang tail is parang ganyan. Okay. <laughs> it looks wrong. Okay, notched. This notch, meaning na siya. Ulit ulit, parang na siya ano ba? Uh, notched, yeah. Na siya, na siya depression on the middle. Na siya depression on the middle. Okay? Notched tail. One of the def defining characteristics or one of the characteristics that we use to uh, compare filariform larva of your strongy. Okay? And hookworm. All right, so again, longer esophagus and notched tail. All right. Okay, yeah, that's the notched tail. Okay, all right. And of course, para man easier ang life for you guys, so I made a table na lang to compare talaga, no? So we'll start first with the rhabditiform, no? And what are the characteristics that we use for comparison? The buccal cavity and the genital primordium. So for hookworm, dako siya og mouth, no? Big mouth but small iyahang organ, okay, or gentle organ. Whereas for threadworm, di ba, or strongyloides, small mouth but dako iyahang organ. So, unsan yung kilion, guys? Gamay ang ba-ba, pero dako ang mm. Pero, dako ang ba-ba or gamay ang mm. What's your bias? Charot. What? Choose your fighter. <laughs> Leave in the comments below. Charot choka. Okay, all right. And for the filariform, what do we use for comparison? The sheath and the tail. Usually, the tail yud ato ang lantawan. If the tail is pointed and it's sheathed, meaning there's a covering, okay, but usually di kaysa makita or you cannot see it. So we, lo we look at the shape of the tail. If it's pointed, then that's hookworm. But if it's notched, okay, or para may mga depression. <laughs> Yes, like charot lang. Notched, okay, tail and unsheathed, then that's for strongy. So my mnemonics for that is uh, Dax, si strongy. Dax, uh, <laughs> baso sa gigay. Dax at my notch, si strongy. Okay, so Dax, meaning big in the rhabditiform, so siya ang nauna. 
L1. Ducks, genital primordium, meaning big, prominent, conspicuous, yes. And my notch, so siya ang naulahe sa hunemonics, kay L3 man siya, re- referring to the filariform larva, notched ang kanyang tail. So, <laughs> so alam na, you know, of course, um, so si Strongy yung may mga ganyan na mga bastos, no? Ducks siya, ganyan siya, ducks, nabun siya yung notch. Okay, so, kinsa mo yung ganahang dili, ducks, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> Nagkakalat na naman si Mark Rodney, but anyway, alright. <laughs> Ang basos ko talaga. But anyway, ducks and nine notch. Si Strongy. That's how I remember. Okay? Alright, so anything outside of your mnemonic or my mnemonic, then that belongs to hookworm na. Alright? Okay, ayan. So again, you can have your own mnemonics. If you want na medyo PG lang, delete. Not, you know, not too much of a you know, green like me or R-rated, but then go ahead lang yun. <laughs> but again, mas, it's more effective. It must uh, retainable, okay? Mas more retain ang bastos <laughs> na mnemonics, okay? Guys, you know, for, for studying, para mas makaremember, you have to do stuff. You have to do things good na you, you don't think that you can do, okay? <laughs> like mag mnemonics ng bastos or whatever. For the sake lang yun na makaremember, for the sake na makapastar. Yes, okay, alright. Ayan, so again, that's the comparison. So, tabular form. Basta mga comparison, guys, no? Comparing parasites, especially also um, comparing parasites, hookworms, uh, strongy, um, information of parasites, infective stage, mode of transmission, and all that. Very, very helpful. Very, very um, easy to retain if you put it into tables. And you're very much lucky because that's the notes of Mam Bernal. Very, very organized talaga it. I love it so much. And very easy then to retain because again, all are in ta- tables. Tabular siya. Okay, very, the best, the best talaga. Okay, all right. That's again for Strongy and Hookworm na larvae comparison. Ta- tabular. And for picture purposes, ayan, that's the difference. For Rabditiform, as you can see, for Strongy and Hookworm, as you can see, the size is quite, they are really short and stout, no? But again, what we look after for uh, Rabditiform is your gentle primordium. As you can see, medyo, Malake kay Strongy, di ba? Ducks. And for <laughs> hookworm, wala. And for buccal canal, again, Strongy short mouth, but for hookworm, kay long. Alright? Okay. And for filariform, what we look after is the tail. As you can see, the tail is notched. And as you can see, pointed ang sa hookworm. Okay? But again, again, notch, dili siya straight na. Ayan. This is pointed, di ba? And, but for notch, parang may ano siya. May feet. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, okay, I need to clean my mind. Kailangan siya na mag- mag-reformat, no? Dami ng virus, but anyway, alright. Okay, that's for comparison in terms of picture. Okay, alright, ayan. So, that's for um, hookworm and strongy larva. So, as you can see, that's why I didn't elaborate much on hookworm and strongy on our lecture on the parasites that we can see in fecal smears because, again, we have this. <laughs> this is the main uh, bulk of Harada Mori than a lecture. Okay, and because again, how to differentiate the two. Okay, so I hope na gets lang. All right, okay. Uh, but aside from strongy and hookworm, you can also recover this next parasite, which is your uh, trichostrongylus. But trichostrongylus, um, okay, so your species are T. orientalis, T. colibriformis, and T. axi. But trichostrongylus is a parasite of your sheep and cattle and can only occasionally infect man. Okay, but when it can infect man, pa rin, then okay, <laughs> pwede siyang recover Okay, but the infective stage is still the same, filariform larva, but the mode of transmission is now different. It's through ingestion of the larva. It's not through skin penetration. Okay, and how do we get it usually thou, from leafy vegetables? So, example, sheep and cattle, nalibang, no? they poop <laughs> on the leafy vegetables and then it was not properly cleaned. Okay, and then you ate it, it contains the larva, then that can cause infection na. Okay, for the eggs, they are similar with hookworm, but they are much pointed. It has a tapered end than, than hookworm. Rabditiform, longer esophagus, and the tip of the tip. The tip of the tail has a bead-like swelling. And aside from that, it has the smallest, siyang pinaka-jutes. <laughs> siyang pinaka-maliet, yamags, gamay, sa, sa tulo. So, sa hookworm, strongy, and sa trichostrongylus. Si strongy yung pinakamalaki. Ooh, siya ang ducks. Okay. Si hookworm kay sacks. Sakto lang. Okay, alright. And then si uh, trichostrongylus ang jutes, ang gamay. Okay, siya ang maliet. 
All right? Okay. Basos ko talaga. Ay, I can use those terms talaga. I hope you get it. <laughs> so mga ano dyan, mga well-aware, mga well-versed sa mga terms na ganyan. We can be best friends. <laughs> Joke na. Okay. All right. Ayan. Smallest genital primordium. So siya ang jutes, siya ang gamay. All right. Okay. And for filariform larva, the intestinal lumen, meaning its intestines, is zigzag. 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 Okay? And the tip of the tail is knob-like. So we'll have a picture on that later. Okay. And the adults, they have no distinct buccal capsule, meaning their mouth cannot really be seen or parang di makita. And they also don't have teeth like ancelostoma or plates like necator. Okay? So simple lang. All right? So here's an egg of Trichostrongylus. As you can see, pointed ang end. Looks like a schistosoma egg na, no? But similar appearance with hookworm. But again, ang hookworm is oval talaga. Diba? That's not an oval mark. Oval. Ganun. But as you can see, ang trichostrongylus kay ana siya, but pointed. Yan. Parang diamond. Not diamond. Yeah, okay. But anyway, pointed or tapered end. And for the adult, ayan, as you can see in the picture, it's zigzag ang kanyang uh, intestinal lumen. Okay. All right, but again, occasionally infect man lang, not common. All right, because again, it generally infects your sheep and cattle. Okay, trico, strongylus. All right, okay, so basically that's uh, for Harada Mori. So um, after preparation, of course, examination. Because again, this is what we'll perform in the laboratory. Okay, so those are the parasites that we can see in Harada Mori. Okay, and for the next uh, uh, lectures now or slides, we'll then focus on the different methods, diba? other methods for culturing your helminths. We'll start first with the slant culture technique. As mentioned, it's an alternative method, modification of Harada Mori, still for the um, cultivation of strongyloides. Uh, the stool is placed on a filter paper pa rin, but the size is of a glass slide. And, as, and instead of putting it in a test tube, you put it in a Petri dish. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you've seen already a Petri dish, but the, the Petri dish uh, in agar plates that you see in bacteria, that's a Petri dish. And the Petri dish is filled with distilled water. And so the same, um, the end of the filter paper with the feces should be touching the water. Same lang with Harada Mori. And after 10-day incubation, the preparation is, is examined. It, the advantage lang is it's a direct wet preparation. So what you can see is motil larva. Okay, so you can see motil larva. You don't need to bur uh, put it in hot water. How can you put it in hot water, diba? Because this is the appearance. So as you can see, slanting, and it's put in a Petri dish. Okay, and contains water. And still the same, same with Harada Mori lang. But for Harada Mori, you put it in a test tube. For first land culture, you put it in a Petri dish. Okay? All right. That's for um, slant culture technique. Okay. All right. Next is for agar plate cultivation. So for this, you, it's still used for recover. Strongyloides tercoralis. It's the more sensitive method uh, than your direct fecal smear from concentration techniques. Um, two grams of feces are put in an agar plate and then sealed with tape, and then uh, put at room temperature for two days. And if the sample contains larva of strongyloides, what happens is the larva of strongyloides will move on the surface of your um, agar, and it will uh, produce visible tracks, meaning like mga tracks talaga, like parang mga busot-buslot, not busot-buslot, but you can see like lines talaga on the surface of your agar, which is the movement na of your larva of strongyloides. Ayan. And for further confirmation, you examine the agar plate microscopically. So you, it's much more tedious. I think you use uh, a different microscope than, not sure lang, than your bright field microscope, the normal microscope that we have. I think we use another microscope for that. So this is an example of your agar plate preparation. So as you can see, this is the stool sample. So you just put it there. And then these are bacteria that grows, okay, which will serve as food for strongyloides. And yeah, that's a stool sample. And this is an example of your agar plate that contains bacteria already and your strongyloides larva. So this is your bacterial colonies, guys, as you can see. Colonies meaning these are group of bacteria, like a lot of bacteria talaga na grow in a culture medium. You call that as colonies, okay? All right, the colonies of bacteria. Individual, kaning mga big ones, these are bacteria. Okay, now this one, as you can see, para siyang line, di ba? Those are the tracks, okay, visible tracks of strongyloides larva, larvae that migrates or that moves, okay? So, yes, you could see that there have been cases that, di ba, example, di ba, as mentioned, your strongyloides larva exa um, exhibits ash to lung migration. Now, if there is a request for sputum culture, a culture imong luwa, a culture ang sputum, so you put it in, in this example, 
you can grow both bacteria, this one, okay, because again, your sputum contains a lot of bacteria, and also your strongyloides. If your patient contains strongyloides larva, diba? So, this is an example of that. Uh, in this picture, both bacteria has been recovered, this one here, and your strongyloides larva uh, by the visible tracks, as you can see, the lines, okay? And to examine that, you then, I think, get this, I'm not sure, and then you put it under the microscope or you use another microscope, okay? You examine the agar plate under the microscope. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, okay. All right, so that's for agar plate cultivation. So the same for strongyloides tercuralis. Again, the remaining uh, culture techniques for helminths, they are focusing on the isolation or detection of strongyloides. Okay? All right, that's agar plate cultivation. Next is we have the Bayerman funnel technique. So by the name itself, Bayerman funnel technique, again, where is it used for? It's still for strongyloides, but in cases lang that there is a light infection or small numbers of strongyloides larva may be present in the sample. So light infection. Okay? And you use a funnel apparatus by the name itself. And if the larva is present, it will migrate from the fecal specimen, passing through a wire mesh you know, and layers of gauze, uh, which are in contact in tap water, and then it will put down or it will go down into your container. Okay? All right? And the larva migrate to the gauze, into the water, settle to the bottom of the funnel, again, where they can be collected and examined. And aside from fecal samples, your Bayerman funnel technique also can be also used to, for soil specimen. Because again, as mentioned, if you can recall, strongyloides larva is a, I know, strongyloides sarcoralis is a facultative parasite. It can live with or without a host. So when it is free living, it can be found in the soil, diba? So this soil can also be checked for the presence of strongyloides larva. You can use Bayerman funnel technique. So your Bayerman funnel technique is versatile. Ah yes, versa. It can use both stool specimens and soil specimens both again to detect strongyloides larva. Okay. So here is your um, preparation. So this is the soil or fecal material. Then you have the wire screen and gauze and the water, okay, which serves as parang moist ang preparation para mas mugawas, okay, or it will help the larva move down, okay? And then, of course, you have the rubber tubing and clamp and then the container which then collects the larva. And then from the container, you then can get a sample and examine under the microscope for the larva of strongyloides, okay? All right, and the last method is your charcoal culture. Again, not quite popular or common for me uh, as, as, I've, as I've read, okay? Um, still the same feces, you mix it with 5 to 10 parts of moistened charcoal granules and then you put it in a container and you, kept, you, keep, you cover it. And then after 7 to 10 days, the larva from the soil sample will move to the surface of the, of the mixture. Okay? And then you then put a cotton cloth on it okay, to absorb the larva okay, for half an hour. And the cloth is then removed, placed... Um, uh, kept upside down on a sedimentation flask that contains warm water. And then, of course, still the same principle, the larva will migrate to the bottom of the flask, which you can examine, and the charcoal particles will remain on the cloth. Okay, so again, para ma-isolate ang imuhang, uh, ang the larva. So here's an example of a preparation. So as you can see, this is a mixture of charcoal and feces, and the filter paper will just serve as parang a hanig or like parang a... Um, a place for it to, uh, a place where you can put the, the mixture. And then after diba, 7 to 10 days, you then put a cloth on top of this. Okay, you put a cloth on top of that. Okay, so that you can absorb the larva. Okay, for half an hour. And then after a while, after half an hour, you then put a flask. Flask. Ay, bayan mark. <laughs> flask. Flask, bunny or tanduay? Charot. Flask. <laughs> and then the cloth you put upside down. The side, this is the side where you let it contact with the, um, the mixture, the side of the cloth, but upside down. And then this contains warm water uh, until to the brim. Okay? So what happens is the larva, of course, will go down to the sediment. Okay? And the charcoal particles will remain in the cloth. Okay? And then you examine the sediment for the larva. Okay? So again, that's for charcoal culture. Okay, and basically, that's it. Yay! <laughs> that's the end of our culture techniques in parasitology. As I've mentioned, um, as, as we have discussed, 
medyo ang focus lang natin or the one that we focus are the methods for hell myths. Okay? Because for protozoa, usually those are um, mga culture media. Okay? And uh, again, as I've mentioned, culture techniques in parasitology not routinely performed. Okay? But if you perform it, it's usually for the identification, species, good, uh, speciation of your parasites, or if you want a large source of parasites for antigen testing, for drug sensitivity, and other studies, as mentioned kanina. All right? Our main lab activity here is for Harada Mori, okay? The Harada Mori technique, again, we'll have a video on that, the laboratory demonstration. And again, the important thing is the differentiation between hookworm and strongyloides larva, because again, we use that for their differentiation. And eventually, specification, uh, speciation then. Okay? So don't forget our mnemonics. Bahalag medyo green. Okay? And all the stuff that we have mentioned. Okay? So we're almost done. Nagyod with clinical parasitology. I think. Ano na lang? Four or three or four topics na lang left. And then we're done with clinical parasitology. We're done with second semester. <laughs> Yes, Marks, and kana pupunta charwata. Okay, but anyway, I hope I hope uh, you understood our lesson, dears, and I hope you under you you were able to get it. No, I was able to um, uh, lecture it properly. Okay, medyo sabaw ako ngayon again. Medyo kulang na namnok sa tulog sa tulog, but anyway, all right, <laughs> all right. So again, um, if you have any questions, feel free. Do not be shy to to PM to chat me or. Um, to chat in our group chat and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right? And um, again, I hope you retain something from here and you learn something from here. Um, again, again, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, dears. And I'll see you on our next pre-recorded lecture. Keep safe and have a great day. Thank you, dears. Bye. <laughs> okay.